Hi, this is Tim Poffenbarger, and um, I'm a solutions architect at GitLab, and I wanted to walk through an expected flow that I have in my head over um, really the, the power that GitLab provides in terms of traceability. There's a few gaps that I want to highlight, but um, I, I think where we're at is really cool, and I think we're so close to, to getting this right. Um, so when it comes to releases, how can I leverage GitLab's knowledge of all things to my advantage? Uh, my, my standard flow is the, the GitLab flow. So um, here I, I'm developing a fe in a feature branch um, and that feature branch is tied to a default mainline branch um, via a merge request. Once I'm done developing, I'm gonna merge that into the default branch. I'll deploy to production from that default and I'm gonna cut a release. So this release is you know GitLab's uh, kind of first class release object. Um, that release will create a tag uh, via a git tag, but um, I'm not going to have any pipeline run for that release. And then subsequently, that deployment object is um, created uh, within GitLab, within the environments page, and related to um, the, the commit shaws. And this is really where we're, we're so close, um, but this is what I'm expecting to, to happen. Uh, so here you can see that I'm in a GitLab project and underneath project overview, I have my releases page up and here's my version seven release. And it's nice because I can have, you know, I can post all my assets in here. I can show off the different features. Um, I'm really just copying and pasting uh, some of the things that we already leveraged for, I think our 13.6 release. Um, here you can actually, you can see the commit SHA. And if I drill into that commit SHA, you can see that um, there's no merge related requests or no related merge request found, but the, the actual merge uh, message uh, provides that all for me. So it's nice because I have one, the, the issue relation as well as the, the merge request relation. And you can also see that there was a, a pipeline run and that uh, the production job ran successfully as well. So if I click on this merge request, I can drill in and see, um, again, a, a, a different view, but uh, it's also nice here because I have the pre-merge pipeline that ran and then all the the request approvals and then the merge um, action and then subsequently the this deployment out to production. So you can actually see that it was deployed out to production from the, the merged merge request page. So far, this is great. Everything's kind of tied together. Lastly, I'm gonna click on this production, uh, which is gonna take me to this production environment page. And um, here's where it gets a little, little confusing. So I just deployed this. This is my most recent deployment, but it is a, an older deployment. So you don't actually see it all the way up here. You have to scroll down quite a bit. Um, and you can see that it was the most recent deployment uh, out to production which is okay, um, a little confusing. And, but lastly, this is only related to this master branch rather than uh, what I would expect would be um, showing the tag here, which is way more valuable from a, a developer standpoint. Um, you know, this merge commit message is not useful based on the GitLab flow. This commit SHA is not gonna be very useful because I'm not a machine. Um, and this master branch is not gonna be very useful because you know consistently I'm only seeing this, this commit. Where this page comes really into play is being able to you know manage those rollbacks if I, was, um, if I had access to deploy to production environment, which I personally don't since I'm a developer. But um, being able to see you know the incremental um, changes of these deployments take off, uh, I would much rather see the tag take precedence over the, the master branch. Thank you for your time. Hopefully this made sense. Um, yeah, great work so far. I'm super excited about where we're going with this.